We now read Psalm 23 in unison that you'll find on page 6 in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely God, the days of, the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, be with us as we hear and study your word. And in studying your word, help us to discern your will for our lives. And in discerning your will, empower us to act. It is in your dear son's name that we pray. Amen. When the words of Psalm 23 pass over our lips, the psalm no longer belongs to the author, but it belongs to us. Our faith is expressed through the faith of the psalmist. This faith that is voiced by the psalmist is a sticky faith that tacks itself on to each one of us, ready to be shared again and again. I consider the faith that has been shared with me to be the most important characteristic of my being. Faith is what allows me to open my closed door, step outside, and look around to see the true beauty of God's creation. Faith is what makes my love for humanity possible. Faith is what gets me up in the morning ready to start a new day. And it is only in faith that I can turn to God when I feel like the world has turned against me and I find myself wandering in dark places that can only be described with such poetic words as the valley of the shadow of death. If it were not for God coming to me in word and sacrament and instilling faith in me, I would surely be lost forever. And with nowhere to turn but myself, I would perish under the weight of a feather. But because the Church of Christ has shared their faith, which comes from our Savior Jesus Christ, I know and trust that I will always be able to turn to God, no matter how dark and deep that valley gets. When I was a child, I thought that faith was only important for me, the individual. But I have come to realize that this is a very limited way of understanding faith. When I was younger, I knew that faith was important for me. What I did not understand until my grandmother died a few years ago is just how important another person's faith can be for me and for all those in that person's life. I had just decided to attend seminary when my grandmother died. As a matter of fact, Mackenzie and Sarah and Keller and myself, we were all on a road trip from Florida to visit potential seminaries when she passed away. Our plans were to visit the Lutheran Seminary in Gettysburg, where I now study, then spend a week at Grandma Betty's house in our hometown, and then finally visit Southern Seminary in Columbia, South Carolina, on our way back to Florida. I remember leaving Gettysburg and calling Grandma Betty to tell her how much we loved the town and how much we loved the seminary and that we would see her the next day in Michigan. When we hit town, we realized we needed a few things, so we stopped at Walmart, only a couple miles from our final destination. Sarah had run into the store when my cell phone rang. It was my Uncle Doug, Betty's son, who gave me the news that my grandmother had suffered a stroke and that she was not going to recover. 
the words that she was not going to make it crushed me. The first thing I did was call my father, Betty's oldest son, to tell him the news. He already knew. He explained that my mother and my brother and he were all getting ready to board a plane to head to Michigan to hopefully see her one last time before she passed. Like it or not, we were about to have the largest family reunion of the past 10 years in our hometown of Muskegon, Michigan. That evening, we all walked into the nursing home where Grandma Betty had been placed on comfort measures. There were about a dozen of us there, and it was strange to see the joy of reunion coupled with the sadness of death. For the next few days, we all spent time with Betty, Grandma Betty in community and on an individual basis. We were blessed to be able to speak with her, and in her last hours of death, she was blessed to be able to see all of her children and grandchildren reunited around her bed. It was only a few days in the nursing home before Grandma Betty died. That day, the world lost a person that loved humanity and had devoted herself to making the world a better place. The world had lost a person of immense faith in God. Her faith was so strong that it gave consolation to all those at her deathbed. There was no question as to whether she would spend eternity with her Savior. There was no question that she was happy that she would finally be with her husband who passed 20 years earlier and her daughter who she watched drown on her 13th birthday. Her faith permeated the room and all of those present. She wore her faith on her sleeve in life and in death. There was no question if she had faith or not. Grandma Betty taught me so many things in my life, like how to love my family and how to be self-sacrificing. But the most important thing she taught me was how important faith is. In true form, Christ-like, it was in her death that she taught me the greatest lesson that I have ever learned. And that is that the faith of one person can be so great that it brings consolation to all those in that person's life. I believe that faith is the greatest gift that has ever been shared with humanity. With faith, there is nothing that we lack. With faith, our cup always runneth over. And it is in faith that the Lord can be our comfort in our times of distress. At the beginning of my second year of seminary, when I was a chaplain, I saw again firsthand just how important faith is in the valley of the shadow of death. In Gettysburg Hospital, I was blessed to share in the life of people as they struggled with physical, mental, and spiritual issues. It was my job as the chaplain to assess if the patients had faith and spiritual practices with which they could use to cope with their hospitalization and treatments. Those who had faith established in them were much better off in coping. They used scripture, holy communion, anointing with oil, hymns, and prayer to cope. It was in faith that they were able to turn their worries over to God. I felt genuinely sorry for those patients who did not have faith to turn to in their time of need. They were walking through the valley of the shadow of death and did not know whom their shepherd was. It was not that their shepherd was not there, but without faith they were blind to him. The saddest part of this was that in their immediate time of need, they did not have time to establish faith. It was either there when they needed it or not. As a chaplain and as a seminary student discerning my call to ordained ministry, I realized, thanks to God's guiding and shepherding hand, that I desperately needed to be a part of faith formation for the humanity that will one day inevitably need faith 
as we all pass through the valley of the shadow of death. God willing, as a parish pastor, I vow to use my life to share the faith that is instilled within me because I know that without faith, I could not handle the world as it is. If I can share one thing with the world, Lord, let it be faith. Our Lord has blessed us here with the gift of Holy Scripture and the Holy Sacraments in with which faith is established. It is in this scripture that we find our story. We find who we are in relation to our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. So let Holy Scripture overtake you. Let it do its job in forming you into who God wants you to be. If you allow this work of God to happen, in you I assure you, that when you are lost in the valley of the shadow of death, then you will recognize your shepherd, and this will be your biggest means in coping and the greatest gift that you will ever receive. Faith is instilled from outside our own beings. It is the work of God in which we are gifted faith, and this comes through word and sacrament. And it is with Scripture like Psalm 23 that faith is generated in our lives. Let the faith in Christ permeate your hearts. Let Psalm 23, the shepherd's psalm, show you that God is love. And spread God's good news to all that you love. Knowing that faith in Christ is the greatest gift that you can ever give. Amen. Amen.